So we've got these idioms, we've got these figures of speech that we use. Then we've got the other one that's a little bit more dramatic and not so favorable. And it and it's become a running joke, I think, between friends, but it still has a sting to it in a way that I'll relate back to the becoming a rabbi story in the first century, is when someone says to you, don't quit your day job. If you were to bring one of your boys to me and you said, I want them to study with you to become a rabbi, I would sit with them and ask him a couple of questions. The answer wouldn't even be the point that he gives. In fact, watch this irony. If he gave me answers too quickly, I would downgrade him in terms of the credibility I give to him. So in other mm. words, what rabbis would do is you'd ask questions, and the questions you'd ask is almost more to stimulate discussion and draw more questions out of the student in a way as to see how deep can you go with this. If I say, hey, Paul, um, what's the day like outside? You know, there's multiple ways you can answer that. Yeah. Then you'd uh, then if you were going deep in with me, you'd say, well, whose day? Your day or my day? Because we're not on the same side of the earth right now, so that's a bit open-ended. Yeah. You know, and that back and forth with the questions and that actually reveals that the student can not play the game, but the student can get into a discussion about wh what's going on and where is this happening without setting up boundaries too early in the discussion, as in to get to a point too quickly, effectively. He had a group in Israel, and there was this really passionate Christian woman with them in the group. And he had said to the group, just in passing, you know, Jesus is a question man. And this woman took offense to that because she's like, no, he's my answer man. And I get the thing, I get the motivation behind that because Jesus has the answers and I get that completely. But she was missing the point of Jewish culture. Apparently she came back after a few days and made a confession to him that she's discovered something amazing and he didn't know what he said. What He says, well, she said, here's what happened. I went into, what, into the market in the old city and I found these beautiful rugs in this one marketplace shop where the where young Jewish guy was... Um, or it could have been an old guy, was selling these rugs. And she went in and started conversation. She's American, so she's bubbly and happy to talk. So she goes in and she looks at the rugs. I'm aware these rugs are beautiful. I love all of this. And then she logically asks, it's a fair question. She asks the guy, um, so tell me, which one is your favorite rug? And the guy pauses before he answers her. He says, are you married? She said, yes, yes, I'm married. He's like, okay, pauses for dramatic effect. And he says, um, do you have kids? She goes, well, yes, I've got kids. Notice the shortness of her answers and the agitation she gets. He's yeah. like, okay. He says, how many kids have you got? Look, by this point, <laughs> she's about to lose her mind. But she's like, well, I'm in this far, so I might as well just figure, just eventually this idiot's got to get to his answer. Yeah. She said, I've got three kids. He pauses again for dramatic effect. And his last statement is the answer to the question. He says to her, which one's your favorite? A Jewish question gets answered with a Jewish question because that's how you do it. You will get to the answer, but that's yeah. the process. So when you read that they, were, they sat with Jesus, there's a banter, there's a back and forth. And they were impressed with his questions and his answers because sure. that, that would have gone back and forth. That's the process of what you do, you know, and that tells you a lot in itself. That, To me, I'm like, yep, that sounds like a rabbi, a group of rabbis sitting with a group of disciples. That uh, <laughs> reminded me of a, of a Jewish joke I've heard, which is that, uh, is it true, you know, you say to the rabbi, is it true that if you ask a Jewish person a question, they always answer you with another question, and the rabbi said, who told you that?